Well, welcome back. This is episode two, James Higgins, World of Strange Powers. Hope you like the music that went with the intros. Uh, right, what I've got for you now is uh, Aaron Marsh uh, story he sent in to try and win the hat. Uh, so a big thumbs up to you, Aaron Marsh. And we're going to, uh, it's going to get read out now here on uh, episode two of James Higgins, World of Strange Powers. So just one second and we'll get to it. Here we go. One second. One second. My paranormal thing that has happened to me was when I was 10 years old. I am now 27. I remember being sat in my parents' living room getting gobby with my dad, who has now passed using the odd swear words, etc. And he said to me, if your nan could hear you now, she would give you a slap. And at that moment, a ornament of a house that was my nan's moved from left to right and flew of the fireplace and landed near my leg. As you can gather, I jumped up and jumped onto the sofa that was behind me at the time. Wow! It's a smaller story, eh? Just one second. Right, just one second, and we'll listen to the rest of it. Here we go. And the second one being about a friend who used to come round for cups of teas, but one night she ran out of the door before my mum or me could ask her what was wrong the next day. We went around to her house to ask her what she ran out the door so quick for leaving the cup of tea behind, lol. And she said that she had seen a black figure crawling up the stairs. We was like, okay, we later found out that my nan, my dad, mother used to crawl up the stairs. As she could not walk up them when she got old only. Thing I found strange about all this is that my nan never came around to our house, even when she was alive. So we always wondered why she came and spurred after and did stupid things. We also have a picture that I took of my dad years ago stood in front of the door that leads to the kitchen. And above this picture, there is a white shiny orb. And if you was to look close at it, you can see a face in it creepy. Hey, there is more. But would be a long story. Our old house, let's just say, was haunted. Wow. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Aaron Marsh, for sending that in. Hope I've spelt your name wrong. A-A-R-O-N, Marsh. So thank you very much. Wow. That was an amazing story. Wow. Here on my channel, James Higgins, World of Strange Powers. Uh, my, I mean, my episode, James Higgins, World of Strange Powers, and on my channel, James Higgins, Open World. Keep watching. <laughs> <coughs> well, welcome back. Right, uh, this is the third attempt to do this now. I've done a few issues, but uh, here we go. Again, here we go. This is Nick the Egg's story. He sent in the one in the hat. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Here we go. old boy i had to move with them the family liked where we were living and shortly after my brother and his wife decided to move closer to us they fell in love with a lovely cottage which was built in the early part of the 19th century as far as i can remember it was built in 1870 wow just one second right here we go here's the second part my brother and his wife viewed the property a couple of times and in August 1986, they finally moved in. It was a beautiful large white cottage with quite a bit of land, and it was surrounded by a large attractive colorful garden. On the day they moved in, as expected, the property was empty, and all ready for them to move all of their furniture in. As they were moving in, during the day, they discovered an old black and white framed photograph of an old gray-haired lady standing in the garden of the cottage looking up at the house. They didn't know who the old lady in the photograph was, and presumed it had been left by the previous owners by mistake, so they placed the photo in a drawer in the kitchen, and thought no more of it. A couple of weeks later, when my brother finally managed to get a phone connected in the cottage, they tried to call the previous owners on a phone number they had been left. They called to tell them that they had found the photo, and were going to see if they wanted to collect it, but the phone number they were given by the previous owners was unobtainable. After this, the photo was placed back into the drawer and forgotten about. When spring arrived and my brother and his wife were settled into their new home, my brother's wife started to care for the garden. On this particular morning, my brother's wife was kneeling on the ground seeing to a beautiful red rose bush when she thought she heard a faint tapping noise. <coughs> Nothing of it, she carried on pruning the roses. But again, she heard the same noise. 
She looked about, but there was no sign of anyone or anything. A few minutes later, she heard the same tapping noise again. My brother's wife then slowly looked up towards one of the upstairs windows of the cottage, only to see the faint figure of an old, gray-haired lady looking down from the upstairs window smiling at her. The old gray-haired lady peering down at my brother's wife was indeed the same old gray-haired lady from the photograph that they found on the day they moved in. Wow! Hey, just one second. All right, it's the last bit. wife wouldn't spend another <clears throat> night in the house and they sold the property a few months later and to this very day nobody knows who the lady in the photo was and no history is known of her and i'd like to add that on the day my brother and his wife sold and moved out of that house the photo still in its frame was left in the same kitchen drawer that they placed it in on the day they found it well thank you very much nick the egg that's a brilliant story isn't it ladies and gentlemen uh that is here on my channel, James Higgins, World of Strange Powers, Episode 2. Yes, and on my channel, James Higgins, Open World. So stay tuned for some for more stories on Episode 2 of James Higgins, World of Strange Powers. <laughs> Hello, my beautiful viewers on my channel, James Higgins, Open World. Uh, and this episode of uh, James Higgins, World of Strange Powers, Episode 2. Right, we've got uh, one hell of a tale for you now. This is called Spring Hill Jack. Um... I think it's even made a movie. I'm not sure. I'd have to, have to Google that. But uh, this is one hell of a tale. It was last seen in Liverpool. Uh, so wait till you hear this. Just wait till you hear this. Here we go. Spring Hill Jack. Just one second. Here we go. Out of the night he came, a leaping, bounding Superman who terrified the English nation for more than 60 years. At first, tales of this devil-like figure who leaped from rooftop to rooftop was accepted as hysterical nonsense. But in January 1838, this strange creature received official recognition when a barmaid, Polly Adams, was attacked while walking across Blackheath in South London. Mary Stevens, a servant girl, was terrified by what she saw on Barnes Common, and in Clapham Churchyard, a woman was assaulted. Lucy Scales, a butcher's daughter, was attacked in Limehouse, and Jane also was almost strangled by a cloaked creature in her own home before her family managed to beat off her attacker, at which point he leapt and soared off into the darkness. Jane also described her inhuman attacker to London magistrates. He was wearing a kind of helmet and a tight-fitting white costume like an oilskin, and he vomited blue and white flames. Wow! Hey! Wow! Wait till you hear the rest of this. Wow! Wait till you hear this. The Lord Mayor of London, Sir John Callan, received complaints from several parts of London describing a demonic creature with eyes like balls of fire and hands like icy claws and able to bound from rooftop to rooftop with ease. The police did not dismiss these stories, and even the Duke of Wellington, Although aged nearly 70, went out armed on horseback to hunt and kill the monster. Who was this mysterious fiend who roamed London attacking women? During the 1850s and 60s, spring Jack was also seen all over England, particularly in the Midlands. The army in 1870 set traps to catch him after scared sentries reported being terrified by a man who sprang onto the roof of their sentry box. Also in 1870, Angry townsfolk in Lincoln are reported to have shot at him in the street, but he just laughed and bounded away, leaping over fences and even small buildings. Wow! Wow, this would make a great movie, this wouldn't it? Just one second. One second. Last bit of this story. For a while, as no one really had any idea who he was, suspicion rested on the eccentric young Marquis of Waterford. But he was never vicious, even though he was considered wild by Victorian society, and been branded as the Mad Marquis. spring Jack was last seen in 1904 at Everton in Liverpool, bounding up and down the streets, leaping from cobbles to rooftops and back. He vanished into the darkness when some brave souls tried to corner him, and he has not been seen since that day to this. The puzzle remains, who was spring Jack? Who was Springheel Jack? 
Well, what I'll do in a minute, I'll show, I'll, I'll show you a few pictures, artist impressions of Springfield Jack. And then we'll move on to the next story. Just wow, isn't it? Hey, wow. Wow. Unbelievable. One second. Right, just one second. There's a, uh, another little bit about the Marby Lady, which I, uh, I mentioned in uh, episode one of James Higgins' World of Strange Power. So there's another little story here I'm going to tell you now. So stay tuned to this great series, James Higgins' World of Strange Powers, episode two, one of 15. Keep watching. Just one second. Here we go. MT, Marbury Lady, is associated mainly with James Hugh Smith Barry, 1748 to 1801, who in 1787 inherited Marbury Hall from his uncle Richard Barry. James, in his youth, spent much of his time in Italy, Greece, and the Levant. Whilst there, he built up a collection of antiquities and works of art, which he housed in Belmont Hall, the house he inherited from his father. It is at this point that the story surrounding James Hugh becomes a little clouded, and it is easy to see where the myth and the true foe be. Wow, just one second. Well, wait, wait you hear this. Wow. dark-skinned, exotic Egyptian girl. He fell madly in love with her, and when he had to return to England, he told her he would send for her to follow him and make her his wife. When some time later he returned to Marbury, he discovered that his family had arranged a good marriage for him. His protestations went unheard, as he was told in no uncertain terms that if he did not do as they wished, he would be disinherited. However, when he met his bride-to-be, he was pleasantly surprised. In fact, she is so beautiful that he fell in love with her and forgot all about his dark-haired, dark-eyed beauty. He married as his family wished and was intending to live happily ever after, until one dark night when there was a knock upon the door of Marbury Hall. There at the doorway was the Egyptian girl that he had pledged his love for. Although shocked, he was pleased to see her and explained her presence as a servant looking for work. Soon the pair once again became lovers and had five children. She made him promise that should she die before him, she wanted her body to be embalmed and kept at Marbury. An ominous request, for she did die before him, and true to his word, he placed her embalmed body in a wooden chest at the foot of a spiral staircase in the hallway of Marbury Hall. When he died some years later, the family were not too keen on inheriting what they considered to be a mummy in a coffin inside the house. They arranged for a decent burial at the nearby G.T. Budworth churchyard. What they did not expect, however, was the hauntings that would follow. It was reported by the locals that they had seen a white-misted lady floating around the grounds of Marbury Hall. Servants inside the house reported covered doors and drawers that would open spontaneously. Doors would close of their own accord, and strange sounds would be heard. Eventually the family brought the chest containing the mummy back to the hall and the hauntings seemed to stop. A few years later, the body was again moved to the churchyard, and almost immediately the hauntings started again. She was once more returned to the hall, and the foot of the spiral ST. Wow! Wow! Hey! Just wow! One second. Right, here's a bit more uh, about the story. Wait till you hear this. to a country club in 1932. Eyewitnesses that we have spoken to swear that they have seen the chest with the wrappings of a mummy still there, with a handful of bones in the chest also. In a country club newsletter that is in our possession, directions were given to the place behind the swimming pool where the lady was buried. Although various stories tell that she was buried in the Rose Garden, the newsletter was very precise on the exact location pacing the steps out to a place where a small stone lay to commemorate where she was finally laid to rest. Sightings of her are still reported to this day. The last known sighting to my knowledge was 2002 behind the swim. Wow! Hey! Unbelievable, isn't it, hey? Wow! Well, uh... At the... This is uh, the, the, I'm, I'm 
doing uh, research and there'll be more stories about the Marby ladies as we, as we go along on this channel, James Higgins, World of Strange Power, so hope you enjoyed that, wow, hey, wow, unbelievable, wow. Anyway, the next story is the last one on this episode of uh, James Higgins, World of Strange Powers. So stay tuned. Uh, episode, World of Strange Powers, episode two. James Higgins, World of Strange Powers, episode two. So stay tuned for the last story in episode two. And the series comes out every Wednesday, and it's, it's one of 15. So uh, keep watching. James Higgins, Open World. One second. Right, welcome back. It's the last story. In Covent Garden in London, about a ghost. So just one second and we'll get to it. One second. Since the station first opened its doors, there have been stories of a tall man in a hat and a cloak wandering the corridors after dark. It has terrified some tube workers so much that they requested a move to a less haunted underground station. And frankly, we don't blame them. This charming character is reportedly the actor William Terrace, who was murdered in 1897. Before his untimely demise, he used to frequent the bakery that once stood on the side of Covent Garden Station, and now stalks the corridors instead. Whether he's looking to avenge his death, or is simply angry at his lack of chronics, we feel you, Will, his apparition makes for a chilling sight. Wow! Well there you go, this is episode 2 of the Done With here on my channel. James Higgins Open World, and this, this is episode two, done and dusted for James Higgins World of Strange Powers. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed doing it. And uh, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to get all the latest videos on my channel. So, see you on episode three. Yay!